Well, hello, YouTubers. Hey, you know, I was just thinking, most of my sticks are on the uppers of inch and a quarter, something like that is the top, go down maybe three quarters to bottom. They're not real heavy, but they're heavy duty sticks. And uh, there are those that likes a little lighter stick. So I'm gonna make a few of those. Those will work just as well as the heavy stick. And I'll tell you what, I, I kind of looking around through my stick pile and I found this one. And this was just about three quarters way up here at the top. And it tapers down nicely to about a half inch at the bottom. And it's only about 52 inches tall to right about here. You can't see the tip of it right now. But I was looking at it and it's got that little knot on the end of it here where I cut it off. It's almost got a little face right there on it. See the little eyes here that may or may not be in the right place. But anyway, it's got sideways right there. I believe I can do something with that over on the carving bench. So I'm going to start out right there and we'll get something carved on the end of this. And then uh, we'll decide what to do with the rest of it. Well, here I am on the carving bench again. And I'm going to try to keep this kind of simple. Uh, tell you what, first we start with a pencil. And I'm going to get a, just a, I like to use a stick to give me the design. And then just kind of tell me what, what's in there. And then you just cut away what, uh, what don't look like what's not in there. Does that make sense? No, probably not. But I'll find the center line of where I want the face of that be. That don't mean the, the, um, these eyes are going to just work out. One of them down here, one of them way up here. So that's probably out of the, out of the question. But you look at that little contour of a chin going right down there at the bottom. So I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to leave that going to be kind of a small face. I'm going to leave that a chin. And that could be a nose. That's about right for a mouth up there. So we just about got something there. What I'm going to do is get that center line. And then I'm going to look. There's a mouth. And the if a nose, the end of the nose is going to be right about where it curves over right there and and uh kind of a wide nose there that i, I can see uh but you you mark that out kind of like you want it and there's the nose and then that means the eyes would come up here somewhere and i'm going to make them straight across here just straight across so you see the eyes where the where the eyes Little little marks there where a twig was is not going to work out. But the eyes will be right in there somewhere. So, I don't know, that's still going to make the uh, nose a little high here. But let's get started. I'm going to cut this down into here. Cut it kind of deep all the way across there and down here. Get that nose started little under here, and we'll go from there. So we got something going here anyway. So I'm gonna turn on the drill. I always start out with the cuts all bit and uh, get my positive pressure hood on and get her going. I want to just stop and show you. I might not think this is simple, but it really is. Now let's take a look at that. You can almost see a little face starting right there if I have the camera right. Okay, right in there. So see, I've, I've just made a line, started gouging, digging right along there, and then got the forehead kind of started here. And I thought, well, if I come straight under that, Leave a little bit here, that's going to be the eyebrow level. And uh, and then I'll have a uh, uh, down in there a little deep, come in each side for a nose, just down this way. Now we've already got, you can see the eyebrows, see the nose started. I cut a little bit under here and down into here. And I got two eyes kind of shaped up. 
because it already looks like a little face on there. So see the chin, I just, I didn't do a thing with that. I just left it the way the stick was. That's the way the little nod run, but you could just as well cut that out a little bit if you wanted to. And if you had more wood under here, you could uh, just make a beard under there. But um, so far, so good. Let's just leave it like that. And uh, let's see what I've done so far. That's looking a little bit better for a face. And all I did was just rough cuts. This is not, the nose ain't shaped. I got plenty of wood to work with right there. And uh, it's just, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with these little birthmarks on here, but uh, that's okay. Got one over here. That's where a limb would come out. Now, that's probably going to be a dark circle, and there's nothing you can do about that. But he's going to have that and that, and this may turn out a little dark under his nose here. I'm not for sure. That's how you get started. Now, what I want to do is take this little grinder I have here, and I have a little... It's a little electric grinder. It only goes about 4,500. This one here is doing about um, 6,000. But uh, this one here, 4,500 max, and it's electric, got a little foot pedal. Uh, it's a 16th inch shaft. And I uh, have these little balls going all the way up to, I don't know, it's nearly a quarter of an inch, if you wanted them. And uh, going all the way down to even smaller than that one. And then I have points on them, you know, whatever you want. But I think we're going to start out with this little ball and kind of do some more shaping in here and uh, see what that turns out to be. I use this like a pencil. Not uh, working too good there. So let me get the bigger boy here. What I'm looking at here is the side. Trying to get this side, about like this side. You're looking a little heavy on this one side. A little bigger ball. Now, see, I made some hair around the back. So we could wood burn that, and I would burn his eye eyebrows. And uh, there was a branch of some sort of here, here, and here that is dark, so I just kind of left that looking like a mustache there. I don't know. We'll see what the wood burning does with his hair. I think we just about got this one. We don't want to spend a lot of time on them, but we want to spend enough to make it look like something. Get the wood burner turned on. This one's a flat one. So I think I got this one turned on. It won't take long to find out. I'll go down through here. Just run down the hairline. Run down on top of the hairline is what I usually do. When that gets hot enough, that'll start looking like hair down through there. And you can go in the front. See, the hair will kind of go at an angle then back this way. But seems to be always somebody that likes what you're making. And uh, you know, you can't, you can't make one that just appeals to everybody. Now I can sit in here and carve mushrooms on the end of sticks and sell them all day long. People just seem to like them. But, and if all I did was carve mushrooms, people would quit watching my channel. I'm fairly sure of that. All right. There's a little guy on the end of that stick, whether we like it or not. A little burning on the eyebrows here yet. Now I'm going to put this stick back in there. This one has a ball shape on it. And I'm going to put some, some eyeballs right in there, darken where the eyes are. I'm going to go over and sand the rest of the stick here. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'll do anything else to it or not. Now right, here we are, same routine here with my sanding process, which wouldn't be right to not tell you how I'm doing that. Now see, this time 
I didn't sand it first. And I'm going to do um, a 150 here on one sander and I have 220 on the other. But I'm going to do it over the 150 first. I'm not going to show the 220, but I'm just telling you that's what I'm going to. And then we're going to come back after the sanding and going to put a finish on it. Here we are now, I have my clean tablecloth down, I have my Minwax wood finish. Guess what? Golden oak. For you that don't know me, most of my stuff gets golden oak. The reason why is I just like golden oak. For the one, one thing, that you can repurpose old washcloth. We use uh, washcloths that get kind of worn in the house, and wife likes to put new ones out every once in a while anyway, so I said, well, just... Uh, you go buy your new washcloths anytime you want to, and then I'll take save the old ones for me because that's what I use to wipe stain with, and I just dab it on pretty well here. It's got beautiful wood in it. I don't know what kind of wood it is. Get that stain on there real good. I will let it go at least four hours to dry, so we'll be back in a jiffy. The grain is just beautiful in this wood. And I left some of the underbark on there, you see that lighter in spots, but that blended real well and adds to the character of the stick just to leave some of that on there as long as, long as it's good and solid. And it sands real well and it's all smooth and blended together. And that's going to be a beautiful stick. Once we get our poly on it, I'm using again polycrylic and I have a, that's clear gloss. What I do is brush it on. I call it wipe on poly. The people that same people, I guess, makes a blend. They 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 thin it down. I think is all they do. Actually, the wipe on poly seems to me like it's about fifty percent thinner. This works just as well. But I brush it on first, and I go right on down the stick, just kind of like a squeegee. You go right on down. Don't squeeze too hard. But you see, I have an eye hook in the end of it there so I can hang it upside down in the drying room. Let's get back to see what that looks like. You see it's got a got a nice sheen to it now. I'm gonna use this silver and red paracord and we're gonna do a paracord wrap with a wrist strap. A good six foot off of it, maybe a little bit more, but I'm gonna find the center of it. And the center is right there. And we're going to wrap this from the neck down, and where it stops is where the wrist strap is going to start. So we'll start in the middle here, and let's go around. And I'm going to tie just a slip knot in there, just, just as if you were, just as if you were going to tie your shoe. We get that pulled through there, and tighten that up right there. Now we don't have anything to pull back through, so we can just tighten all we want. Want to make it real snug, and then I'm going to pull this through again, and we're going to tie another knot just below that. See, we got this first slip knot right up underneath there, and then we go around again and we tie another slip knot right below, and we'll tighten that up. Now you bring your other one, and you want it below that one, so let's start it right through there and pull it through again. So now we want this one to come adjacent to that first knot at the top. And we'll pull it tight and then we go back over and we'll tie another knot right through that. Just a slip knot like you're starting to tie your shoe. That's all it takes. Turn it over. We got two wraps already. The third one is going to knot is going to be right below that one. So we will smuggle that through again. Water it up, whatever it takes. We pull that through. Now we got this loop right in the throat again, right around the front. Pull that. Let's pull that tight. Now we got we got one, two, three loops around that, and it's going right on down the stick. But now what I'm going to do? Made a couple of three turns. I'm going to push that up on there, and that hides the stick in between. That pushes that knot up tight. So now we turn it back over and just go back and forth with that until you get down to where you just have enough for your wrist strap. This is not the hand grip. This is the hand grip in this area. Area, this is where the wrist strap begins. So I'm going to stop it right there, although I have a little paracord 
too much hanging over. What I do, I stop right there, pull it real tight, and then I put a square knot in it. So let's let's loop that around and put a square knot in that back up here and i think that'll be a square knot now you get no lessons from me on a square knot because this is not a knot knot tying video but you can find if you don't know how to tie a square knot just you can easily find a lot of instruction on the internet for that or on uh, youtube but i've tied a square knot there and i'll pull that tight right there there you go that's a nice square knot that won't come loose now what we want to do is look up here this is the wrist strap now so this loop will slide back and forth so just slide a regular knot in there like this now we got that it, it there's a slip and see let's just make another knot in there right up through there and tighten that down fairly tight and make sure that that slips through there now what you want to do is tie you a knot, tie another knot way up into here somewhere. I'll show you the reason for that. Now let it be about an inch or inch and a half long before you get to that other knot. Pull that up as tight as you can get it. And take your cutter and cut that off right there. Now you've got that stretched out. This is a slip. Got a nice little decorative knot there. Now I want you to go out a little farther than that and look where that knot comes to. Tighten it up. You'll be pulling it like so. And actually you've tied this knot now. You've tied this knot in a string that slides through and it won't go back through that knot because it hit that knot. You've got it real tight again. Just clip it off just like that. Now you've got a nice little decorative wrist strap here with two knots looking at the end and uh, you can tighten it up. Now let's get everything turned around and make sure that uh, we give it a good review. How about that? Well, it looks like I finished up another walking stick, and this time I used uh, kind of a gray and with some red in the paracord. And uh, you see the carving is just a uh, little feller's face there, and he's got. He's got some long hair it's tucked under his uh, shawl or scarf he's got on. And uh, this is not intended to be the grip. The grip is right down here. So you need a wrist strap right of where the grip starts. So we can bring your arm right through that. Leaves a good place for a grip. It's three quarters at the top. This gives us some decoration. This makes a functional wrist strap, but it's got a very nice finish on it and some fine grain and it's a fairly straight stick. I don't put tips on any of them because I leave them all the way from 52 to 58 inches long so they can be shortened by the person that buys them. This can make a very short stick for a young lad or it can it can leave it like that for maybe a 12 year old on up and a young lady stick you know it can be everything in between. So uh, I think it turned out all right. There's a close-up of the face and uh, hair all the way down the back, hair parted in the middle. That about does it for this walking stick, and I sure appreciate it if you haven't already to click that subscribe button, please. And also, if you don't want to miss any of my walking stick videos, then you need to click that little bell right beside of it too so you get notified, a little pop-up here on your screen. And you might... Uh, find something interesting there. My wife Susan is battling lung cancer and I've asked for prayers before and I appreciate the continued prayers. So keep that in mind. And for right now, I'd like to say one thing. I'll see you in the next video.